Hello and welcome to a new video about simple electric circuits. Last time we talked about a voltage divider. And today we make it double. Double the fun. Yeah? We're using two voltage divider. And because we're not calling it two voltage divider, we're calling it Wheatstone Bridge. Yeah? Because there is a, a Charles Wheatstone was, was the one who was popularizing this thing. Yeah? Who... Bah. Who, who was using this widely here? Yeah? Uh, Wheatstone name. I know I once tried to to bake my own bread. <laughs> it was also more a Wheatstone than anything else. Yeah? Uh, but okay, Wheatstone bridge. So what the, the base of the Wheatstone bridge is the voltage divider. So let's draw a voltage divider. If this is the base, it cannot be wrong to draw a voltage divider. Here we have one resistor, here we have another resistor, voltage divider, right? This is how this looked like. And we power supplied these voltage dividers by a voltage source, some sort of power source. Here we have the voltage source, here was the output of the voltage divider. So we had an R1, we had an R2. This is from last video. I hope you remember. I hope you remember. If not, watch it again. And now, let's double the fun and make a second voltage divider. Yeah. I'm not really sure if Charles Wheatstone also thought, let's double the fun, let's make... But, actually, that's the way it is double the voltage divider and this time I will make my clamp here and these are my clamps so we have also an R3 and we have also an R4 right so let's draw all the voltages inside so we have here a power supply voltage U0 and we have here of course a U1 we have here of course a U2 we have here, of course, a U3, and we have here, of course, a U4. And here, we have our output voltage, UA, call it UA. Right, and now let's think about, so this is a voltage divider, this is a voltage divider, are they loaded? No, it's open. So they are acting like a voltage divider. So we can immediately say that the both voltage dividers are dividing U0, the complete voltage, into parts. And those parts are uh, behaving, the ratio of those parts are behaving like, like the resistance. This is what we found out last time. Yeah? So at U1 compared to U2 is the same as R1 compared to R2. And also here we have U3 compared to U4 and here we have R3 combined to R4. So far so good. Now let's have a look at a loop. Here we have a loop. I will produce this loop here. Loop, loop one, and let's see what loop one means. So this is ah U two. We cannot read it perfectly. This is U two, of course. Yeah. So we have U two. It's in the same direction. Minus U four. Uh plus UA equals zero volts. Yeah? So this means UA equals U4 minus U2. Simply have this. Yeah? So, I mean, what we have seen here is pretty obvious. Yeah? If both voltages are the same, then we have no voltage here. Because 
if we have here, here is reference potential. Yeah? And here we have u4 more potential, and here we have u2 more potential. And we, if u2 and u4 are the same, here there is no difference in between, so ua is zero. Right? So if you think about that a voltage is just a difference in, in, in electrical potentials, then that's it. And if those two are equal, then those two are also equal. Right? Because in total it must be u0. Always. So it means that if both voltages are divided in the same way, then the output, the output voltage is zero. And this is this is a condition yeah, that if there is R1 divided by R2 equals R3 divided by R4. It's the balance conditional. Then it's balanced. Then UA is zero. UA equals zero volt. Hmm? Yeah, that's the Wheatstone's bridge uh, with the balance condition and so on. Uh, now you can say, oh, all right, uh, okay, uh, but what for? What for? Good question. You know, I can tell you the Wheatstone bridge has a tremendous, tremendous impact or uh, importance in, in measurement. Why? Because you can you can really determine small resistance changes very good. So uh, if you have a balanced uh, bridge, yeah, and one resistance is changing slightly, you see immediately output voltage. So the output voltage is zero again, and uh, the output voltage will appear suddenly. Yeah? Let's let's think let's think about this. Uh, if this R1 is getting a little bit bigger, then this voltage is getting a little bit bigger. Yeah. If this voltage is getting a little bit bit bigger, this little bit must be here smaller. And suddenly this stays the same, this is going down, so UA is suddenly appearing. Okay. Of course you could say yes. But why I don't just measure the difference here? This is why, probably you have already noticed, I drawn here four lines actually. Two green ones and two blue ones. Yeah? As you can see, the blue ones are much shorter, shorter than the green ones. Yeah? The green ones are longer. Yeah? But I want to have, I wanted to show to you which of the green lines is longer. This line or this line? It's not easy to tell, right? Which of the blue lines is longer? This line or this line? It is easy. Even if they are all apart, you see immediately this is longer. And I tell you now, this line is also longer than this line. And this line is 3 mm longer than this line. And also the blue line is 3 mm longer than this blue line. So the difference, the absolute difference between the, of the length of these two lines is the same. Yeah? However, if we are looking at a small line, it appears, it is obvious to us. And it's the same thing here. All right? It's the same thing here that you, it's easier to say if there is something or something little, yeah? it, and then to say, I don't know, this is a length of one kilometer, and this is a length of one kilometer and one millimeter. It's easier to say it's one or two millimeters, then you see it, the difference, yeah? But if you say it's one kilometer and one millimeter, or one kilometer, it's not that easy anymore. And exactly this is the reason why this has such tremendous, tremendous importance. Yeah. And I can say you, usually all resistances 
are the same. Right? So the, 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 usual, the usual usage is like that, that we have here an R. Then we have here an R. Then we have, of course, the power supply again. And then we have the second side. And here I'm using all the same resistances. R and R. Then, of course, the balance condition is met. Yeah? You see immediately, here's UA. Yeah? You see immediately, here is U0. You see immediately that UA must be zero here. And now, let's think what is happening if here this R is now a little bit bigger. Right? Because, you know, a lot of sensors are working with resistance changes, brightness sensors, temperature sensors, uh, strain gauges, for instance. Uh, there are separate videos of this. Uh, you, you can watch it. I will link it. So let's say this one is get, getting a little bit bigger. Yeah? Then the balance is disturbed. Yeah? So here we have more voltage. So this point will drop drop in, in, in potential and suddenly here this stays the same suddenly I have here an, a voltage drop potential drop uh, potential difference between here and here because this potential was is going down because this resistance is getting bigger suddenly I can measure an output and this output I can measure I can use a very accurate measurement device because I only know I need to to measure tiny things, and it's it's like you know a, a scale, a balanced scale. Yeah, if you have the pointer, and you will immediately notice a little drift. Yeah, once it's balanced, it's balanced, and the pointer and the pointer is pointing to each other, and suddenly it makes a little bit, a little bit off. It, it's working also very precise, and this is actually this electrical scale balance balance. And then I could do a trick. Uh, let's say we have strain gauges. Yeah, let's say we, let's say we have strain gauges. So, and we apply those strain gauges alongside. We have a rod, and this rod is getting pulled apart. And we are applying the strain gauges in this direction that it will be pulled apart. And if a strain gauge is be pulled apart, the resistance will grow. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there are videos about this. And I'm not using now one strain gauge here. Mm -hmm. I'm using two strain gauges, and a glue them next to each other. I, I click them. So I'm using two sensors. I'm using this sensor and this sensor. And if this is growing, then this voltage will drop. Uh, this potential will drop. If this is growing, this potential will rise. And suddenly I have doubled the effect. I have it doubled. Uh, so this is, this is, Going down, this is going up in the same manner because it's the same sensor types and so on. And I have doubled the output. Double the output, this is also the reason why if all R's are initially the same, yeah, then those output changes are maximum. Okay? Then those output changes are the sensitivity. It's called sensitivity of the Wheatstone bridge is then at its maximum. If, if they are not the same types, then the output voltage change is not that high anymore. Right? This is why we are using all those R the same R's. And then you could think about yeah, what is happening. You know, let's keep at this bull rod. Then this bull rod will get longer a little bit. However, it will also it will also get shorter or, or not that broad anymore. Yeah? Because the thing, when, when you pull something apart, it will get longer, but it will shrink in, 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 in diameter. So you could place two, two gauges like this, then they will be pulled apart. If they pulled apart, there will be a bigger resistance. 
And if you place a gauge like this on this pool, uh, so cross, uh, then it will be not pulled apart, but shrunken, and the shrunken will then lead to a smaller resistance. And I could even use here minus delta, uh, and here minus delta, and I have already again a more effective way to measure these things. Yeah? So this, I hope I could make it clear that this Wheatstone bridge, this is really something. This is really nice yeah? for, for measurement reasons. Speaking about measurement reasons, in reality we have to put in here our measurement device. We want to determine this voltage, so we have to put in our measurement device. But the measurement device has some resistance, so it's looking like a resistance. And then suddenly this is uh, not free or unloaded voltage dividers, they are suddenly loaded. Yeah? So in, in reality it looks like that, that we have here. Our Wheatstone bridge. Here we have the clamps. And in here we have now our measurement device. And our measurement device is nothing from from electrical point of view, it's a resistance. Yeah, RM. This is the measurement device. Voltmeter or whatever. Right. This is now uh, a loaded Wheatstone bridge, and you see it's not that easy. To calculate, yeah, you need a delta y and so on. Yeah. Not that easy. Yeah. So the, the 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 balance condition seems not to be working anymore and so on. Yeah. What to do? This I will show you in next video. Next video I show you a version how you can calculate this loaded bridge with a theory. So we'll replace this with a voltage source. Yeah. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.